Hey, good morning, everybody. It's early morning to LA, the continuation, the 6.30 edition. How are you? The toast is toast and the butter is buttering. I'm here, you're here, and the third stimulus package will be there, the Senate, on February 22nd, no later. Last yesterday, it finalized in the House and is now going to be called for a vote across all members. In this recording, I go over the other deal provisions in the third stimulus package and where the push is underway and why the bill could suddenly go bigger and bolder than we ever thought before. This is the great news. One leading senator has stepped, up, has stepped up and said this bill will be blocked unless it goes bigger and bolder, and this will likely signal for other senators to do the same. Finally, someone's fighting for your money, and I have all the great news on a big early mornings recording of Early Mornings LLite. Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you? The toast is toast and the butter is buttering. You ready to crush the weekend? This is LA from Wall Street to Main Street, from my home to your home. Thank you for joining me on a new day. It's a big day, so make sure you subscribe. Also like this video and hit that alert so you get an alert when a new video goes live. Also, if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Over there on the side is an instant chat. And you can chat there with your Purple Power buddies. Chat about what you think is gonna happen next week in the third stimulus package because boy, that will be a big week. I'm really excited for next week, so I hope you are as well. So much happening across the board. So let me, without ado and without delay, get right to the breaking news. Let's do it. Let's get to the breaking news. The breaking news as you start the new day is that FQC may be the battleground in the third stimulus package. Why do we know this? Because Ron Wyden, a Democrat and head of the Finance Committee says, you know what, I'm not agreeing to this bill. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> well, you didn't say that, but that's, you know, bye, bye, Stimulicia. <laughs> I'm not agreeing to a six, four and all week at BUC. Where'd you get that crazy number from? Uh, yeah, I, I, he didn't say it that way, but that's basically what he's implying. And I've, I've been saying that for a while, where they get that crazy $400 a week number from. It's supposed to be $600 a week. Now, this is great for FPUC people, but it's also great for everyone else. It signals the ability of senators to step up and say, wait a second, thank you for giving us a bill, but thank you, we're now gonna modify the numbers and push them further up. Um, those senators who are Democrats may not be pleased, like you and I are not pleased, about provisions that they could, need to get modified. And who would fight for your provisions? Well, let me go over them right now. For business grants, which I'm about to get to, generally Marco Rubio, Mar Ted Cruz, the, the represent the senator from Arizona, and Cardin will be the people who would fight for more stimulus for business grants. Then the stimulus check would be, of course, Bernie Sanders. Uh, anything for FPUC, maybe Sanders or Warren. And uh, and then anyone else that's sort of aligned with um, any of the big issues at hand uh, would certainly tag Chuck Schumer. Additionally, SSI and SSDI, $200 a month on top of your existing benefits. That could still slide in here if there's a modification done and the push into person to push the modification is Elizabeth Warren. Now, she as well has gone silent on the issue of your benefits, despite one interview on a broadcast news channel about two weeks ago on a Sunday. So she could certainly do that as well. Um, le let me get to those details. FPUC is under the third sentence package at $400 a week from March to August 30th. It's just, you know, uh, it's not where it should be. Now, a new survey this week, uh, Friday, said that the average person on unemployment gets about $700 a week totally in FPUC and the base, and the base, whether it's PUA or UI. I mean, that's good money when you're looking at 40 weeks of unemployment from January to, to August, but it should be more. Next, rent. There is rent assistance for low-income, middle-class, uh, and homeless people. 
also wonderfully for people who are about to become homeless and also for people who have had to flee a home and are now homeless, like domestic violence uh, victims. Then the business grants are just an absolute mess. Oh, before I get to business grants, there's also mortgage payments as well. That's not delineated well at all. We don't know any bad thing about it. Then there's the business grants. This is just where the comedy hour kicks in because the business grants are supposed to give big money to existing businesses to kick back up, to get going. This is the rescue plan. Let me rescue the business. Nancy Pelosi calls this rescue plan. Well, guess what? <sighs> Five thousand dollars doesn't rescue a business. It doesn't even pay, you know, the electric bill for a few weeks. Five thousand dollar business grant is delineated in the EIDL grant of the third stimulus package, plus something else. I'd like someone to tell me what the plus else is. I'd like to just see a nice big number, like twenty thousand dollar EIDL grant or ten thousand dollar EIDL grant. Five thousand dollars is ridiculous. Also ridiculous is the impact that lobbyists from the restaurant union has have gotten on Congress, unless Congress is just all a lot of restaurant owners themselves. The Congress's provision in the third stimulus package for restaurants is crazy. Up to $5 million per location as a grant, not even a loan, a grant, and includes a restaurant location as a food truck or food stand. Yes, the taco stand on the corner could get up to a $5 million grant. And no other business or industry gets this type of money. Why are we just giving it to one industry and no other industry? Then finally, the, EI, the loan to start a business, to go start a business, which was the big crowning, uh, rallying cry for President Biden during that primetime speech about two weeks ago on a Thursday, it's just not in there. It's not in there. I, someone tell me where it is. I can't find it. There's PPP, of course. And that's sort of the problem. There's also a problem with how the stimulus package was written. The stimulus package was written in January. It was written by President Biden. It was written at a time in which we didn't know about variants of the virus vaccine. And President Biden said two things. We're going to reopen the businesses by, and within the first 100 days, and we're going to reopen the schools. Well, we all said, wait a second, how can you do that? There's no vaccines. Even if you got more vaccines, we're too far behind. You can't reopen all this stuff. Every time he was asked that question, his press secretary refused to respond. Well, yesterday, his um, head of CDC came out and said, yeah, we're reopening the schools within 100 days. Now, ultimately, the, the the federal government cannot reopen a school, but they can give guidance. We, we give guidance that you can reopen a school without teachers being vaccinated. That was the message. <laughs> yeah, tell that to some governors, even Democrat governors. Gavin News said, mm -mm, not happening, not happening. We are not reopening our schools in California under my jurisdiction as governor unless you get more of our teachers vaccinated. We are not opening schools with teachers unvaccinated. That's not happening. Well, last week, Andrew Cuomo was under fire, the governor of New York, to open interior dining before Valentine's Day. That was the message. Reopen it before Valentine's Day. We'll make so much money. It's a big money day. We'll make more money than the entire year. Reopen it. So what did he do? He reopened it several weeks ahead of time, saying that the, the numbers of infection rates and hospitalizations and death have shrunk dramatically, which they have. Here's the problem. No one knows why the numbers are dropping. And they don't think it's from vaccination numbers because the vaccination numbers are still not the robust. They're about 15% of the U.S. population. And this is amid the variants spreading. The, um, the U.K. variant is expected to be the dominant variant in the next month, in March. It's supposed to overtake the current variant of the current version of the COVID in the United States. Then two months later in May, the South African variant is expected to be the dominant variant. So what is the reaction from doctors to what's going on with the Biden administration and Cuomo with this sort of let's open up things, let's open it up left and right now? Uh, virologist Angela Rasmussen last night said that reopening indoor dining, which is the New York thing, is a, quote, an extraordinarily reckless and premature decision in the face of new variants spreading. 
she continues, while I appreciate the economic impact, importance of opening a business back up, and while cases are on the decline, we have new variants that are circulating that are more transmittable. We do not need to create new opportunities for the virus to spread among strangers who are not in each other's household groups. We need to hang in there a little longer with the non-pharmaceutical interventions that are meant to reduce exposure risks, such as masking, distancing, until we get more vaccinations. Those are great comments. This Tuesday, earnings reports are coming in. CVS Health will Health report earnings after the bell. Avis budget as well. Lazy boy, <laughs> the donut guy will watch that earnings report. That's Tuesday. Of course, Monday is a federal holiday. Wednesday, Hilton report earnings. Owens Corning, Cheesecake Factory, delicious. Uh, Thursday, Walmart will report earnings along with Dropbox and TripAdvisor. Dropbox will be dropping the earnings in, in, in a folder you can download. <laughs> Friday, Deer and any and Alliance will drop their earnings reports as well. Deer will mow it up real quickly. Um, and then we get new existing home sales reports on Friday at 10 a.m. and housing starts number on Thursday a.m. Thursday, 8, 8, 30 a.m. Of course, we get new jobless claims every Thursday, 8, 30 a.m. This is um, Eastern Standard Time. Finally, um, the head, the CEO of Azek, Jesse Singh, spoke last night about how money is flowing. The focus on the homes really keeps us long-term benefit, but we need to focus on the people investing in homes. Basically, um, the housing market continues to do well, but as Jerome Powell said this last week, you know, I got it. Some parts of this economy are doing well, but that doesn't have anything to do with me. I have to see broad stroke economic recovery across all sectors of this economy. If I don't see it, Nothing's changing for the purposes of economic policy in the Federal Reserve. Amen. Very straight and very to the point. We see it, unless we see it, everything recovered. Don't come back to me and start asking for a particular thing because one group recovered. He said that's how economies work. Some parts of the economy rebound faster than other parts. Some parts struggle for a long time. I have to see all parts of the economy rebounding. And there you go. Uh, it's a big morning. If you did not watch EID on Overnight to LA, catch that. FPUC, catch that. And Hazard Pay last night, catch that as well. I'll be next back with you at 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time with Mornings LA. Stay informed, stay focused, and stay for LA for more.